good people of the world, good people of the world. What's going on, man? Hopefully everybody having a blessed day. Um, welcome to another episode of Rev Mio TV. Rev Mio TV. Hey, man, we just trying to inspire some young people, man, and just trying to inspire people as a whole, right? So uh, I'm going to get right into this story today, man. I'm going to talk about um, a couple of the officers that I encountered while serving time, right? And I, I, I definitely encountered a many of them, right? But I'm gonna, but I'm gonna talk about a couple of them, man, and like some of the things that kind of go on um, with, you know, the officers as it relates to inmates and stuff like that, right? So I'm gonna tell y'all about an officer, man. We used to call him Jamaica, right? Jamaica okay okay so he was a black dude of course slim you know he looked he looked like you know he probably used to be an athlete or something like he ran track or something you know slender bill um the thing about jamaica okay understand this it's a lot of contraband that's in prisons however it get there however it got there it's a lot of contraband that's inside the prisons it's a lot of cell phones that's inside the prisons. It's a lot of them, right? So Jamaica, I was at the Atlanta camp. I was at the Atlanta camp, right? And um, man, the Atlanta camp, okay, typically when you think about a camp, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, uh, um, okay. I'm, 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 tr I'm trying to get y'all a picture of this thing. You understand? So, a camp is sometimes like when you hear people refer to club fed. When people go to the feds and you know they call it club fed, then they referring to a camp, right? But camps are not club fed anymore. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't it ain't like that anymore. Especially a place like the Atlanta camp. It got two fences around it. You understand what I'm saying? The Atlanta camp also sits in the city. It's in the city. So it's a lot of corruption, man. A lot of corruption, man. A lot of contraband that goes on or that gets into the prison. You know what I'm saying? I need to just, man, just, just just tell some stories just simply talking about the Atlanta camp, man. It'll blow y'all mind, man, the stuff that uh, would go on when I was at the Atlanta camp, right? So, picture this, right? The Atlanta camp set outside of the wall on the same compound as the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, Right? Um, it's a medium high now, but it was forever a penitentiary. Okay, so the camp sat outside the big old wall behind fences of its own, right? So the officers that worked at the big prison also worked at the camp, right? And they would you know, alternate every so often or every quarter, every few quarters or, you know, whatever. Every, you know, once, a, uh, you know, take a quarter out of the year or whatever. So you see different rotations of officers that are work between the camp and the pen, okay? Man, cell phones behind the wall at the pen, you know, Back in back when I was there, well, I would probably sell for like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars a cell phone, depending on um the the supply and demand at the time. That mug might cost two thousand dollars for one cell phone, right? And I'm talking about I ain't I'm, I'm talking about a I'm talking about a regular, you know, just, I ain't talking about no iPhone or the the newest phone or nothing like that. I'm talking about a phone that might be, you know, three, four, five years old, stuff like that. Now, 
at the camp on the same grounds just outside the wall at the camp man you could get a phone for a hundred dollars easy two hundred dollars easy three hundred dollars easy you could get a phone for fifty dollars if somebody just needed the money that bad because they know they can easily go get another phone they can get another phone it was so many phones man phones everywhere man you know what i'm saying phones everywhere everybody walking around hey look everybody everybody walking around like this here you know what i'm saying you know of course you gotta hide them but still okay so we had an officer right we call him jamaica he was from jamaica man dude this what he used to do. Man, he'll come through that gate. He'll come through the gate at camp. He'll come through the gate. And he'll make his mind up where he gonna go, right? And you got a lookout, man, in every dorm. You know what I'm saying? You got a lookout, man. We have a lookout, man, that's gonna be at the door. You know what I'm saying? You take shifts. You know, you wash the door for an hour or whatever. And... Some people at the same time will be looking out their windows. You know, you always trying to see. Man, all of a sudden you'll see this dude, man. So you might hear the lookout man say, There go Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica coming through the square. Next thing you know, he just take off running full speed to a dawn. He gonna take off running full speed, right? <clears throat> Full speed, he break out running, man. Like he running a, uh, like, like he running a hundred meter dash in the Olympics, right? The man would take off running full speed, right? And so all of a sudden, people would be scrambling. They'd be like, "Here he come! Here he come! Here come Jamaica! Here come Jamaica!" So you gotta have a quick stash spot somewhere to put your phone. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a quick stash spot somewhere to put your phone that they're not likely to look, right? You know what I'm saying? For situations like this, now. Sometimes, uh, either people didn't hear the door man, the watch out man, the lookout man, either people didn't hear him say the police coming, or for whatever reason, you know, they didn't put their phone in a good spot or whatever. Some people just put it in their pocket and just try to walk by. Like, they get there fast now, you know what I'm saying? So, a dude might just take and put his phone in his pocket. So then Jamaica, he'll bust up in the, he, he bust up in there. It ain't took him like five seconds to get there, man. That's how fast the man be running. But from the time he say, here you come, you got about five seconds before he hit that door, right? So listen, listen, young people, young people, young people. Check this quick word out real quick, right? First Corinthians 13th chapter, we call it the love chapter, man. God tells us how to love people. He tells us that love is, you know, long suffering. He tells us, that love looks for nothing in return. It looks to profit nothing. That love is, is not puffed up. Love is not easily provoked. You know what I'm saying? Um, but love is kind. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to tell you today, man, do what 1 Corinthians 13 chapter say to do, man. Be kind to somebody today, all right? Matter of fact, um, somebody you've been mad at, man, upset with, call them and tell them you forgive them and you love them, all right? That's the word for the day. So look, so Jamaica will bust up in there, man. So you got people that don't put their phones in a little spot. Some people don't put them in their pocket and, you know, don't tuck them, you know, uh, you know, in the crotch or whatever. They don't put them up, up, up under their pillow, whatever they done did with them. So he busts up in there. So, man, this, uh, this dude, this dude would, um, say for instance, so, so he catch a dude right there that got the phone in his pocket. So he'll get the phone. he say, hey, come here. So he'll pat that pocket, get that phone. He'll say, all right. He'll say, you got a SIM card in here? So you might say, yeah. Yeah, I got a SIM card. He'll say, here. He'll give you your SIM card back and take the phone. He'll go to the next man. Hey, hey, you, come here, come here, come here. Get the next one. So he'll, so, so, so he'll hit a few people. You know what I'm saying? And, no, and normally, like, like he'll come, he get him about two, three, four phones or something like that. And, uh, and um, he get a SIM cards back. So now he leave out of there. Now, now just imagine now, he done came down there and robbed these people for the phones. He done robbed them for the phones, right? 
Now, he take these phones, he get, let, let's just say he get three phones. Now he take these three phones, he gonna take them behind the wall to the big prison, right? He gonna take them behind the wall. Now he finna sell them. He finna sell them wholesale. He got him three phones. The phones back there, okay, let's just say they're going for a thousand dollars. He got a man back there he dealing with. He say, all right, man, I'm gonna give you all three of these phones for 500. So the dude gonna, okay, gonna heck call his people, hey, hey, send this money, da 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 da, 500 a piece, you know what I'm saying, three phones, okay, 1500. So he gonna sell the phones. He gonna double his money, you know what I mean? So Jamaica made him a free 1500 or, or, or more. And whoever he dealing with, you know what I'm saying, the, whatever inmate he dealing with behind the wall is, uh, you know, going to make his money, right? So dude would do that. Every now and then he just pop up. He just pop up and go to run into the dorm, run into a unit, right? So then on a, so another officer, man, another officer, uh, Officer Arnold, Officer Arnold, man, shout out to Officer Arnold, man, Officer Arnold. Officer Arnold was cool, man. Officer Arnold was cool, right? Officer Arnold was cool, man. But I'm going to tell you what happened with Officer Arnold, right? So Arnold be around there about drunk, right? He be around there, man, about wobbly, tipsy, you know what I'm saying? You know. And Arnold wouldn't mess with nobody. You know, Arnold come through. He just crack jokes and laugh and stuff all the time. And, you know, and um, as y'all know, I was the inmate pastor. And so I'm always, you know, in my Bible, um, going back and forth to church, stuff like that. So he'll look at me, you know what I'm saying? He'll call me Rev or Bible Thumper. He'll say, what's up, Rev? So Arnold was so cool, like, he'll, um, you know, like, like, he, like he'll just stand, you know, sit there and try to have conversations with you about life. You know what I'm saying? But he loved to crack jokes. He was silly. And he wasn't trying to lock nobody up. He wasn't trying to lock people up, right? He wasn't trying to lock people up. He know people be on the phone, man. He wasn't really paying it no attention and stuff like that, right? But if you disrespected him and you think you just going to have the phone in front of him, then no, okay, he going to get you. He don't want to see it. But if he seen like dudes that have um, 12 packs of beer and stuff, man, on ice and stuff like that, in prison now, I'm talking about real 12 packs out the liquor store, right? They'll have the stuff sit... I done seen Arnold walk up on a 12 pack sitting in, sitting, uh, 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 how many of her beers was sitting in, sitting in the ice, the ice, you know, you use the mop bucket, you take it, you put two, three trash bags around it to line it, and then you fill it up with ice, right, and then dudes, you know, them dudes put their, put their beer in there, you know, drink cold beers, right, so, um, Arnold, Arnold, um, I remember him walking up on a, 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 a mop bucket full of beer, Know what I'm saying? And he just told him, man, look, man, y'all, man, y'all put that stuff away, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, man, y'all, y'all put this stuff away. Now, but at the same time, Arnold used to walk around a little tipsy sometimes too, right? But Arnold used to, um, Arnold used to, uh, I remember he'd come sometimes to get something to eat out my locker. Yeah, police do that sometimes. He walked through there, man. And, he stop over there in my room if I'm in my room and he'll say he'll say hey Rev what you got sweet in that locker like he like he like honey buns and stuff right so he'll sit there for a minute or something and then I'm trying to get him gone because people want to get back on their phones you know what I'm saying so I'd be like all right officer honor man you know so I'm trying to you know I'll try to walk off try to leave or whatever he'd be sitting there trying to crack jokes he was cool so he'll get up he'll go you know what I'm saying he'll eat a honey bun or two or whatever and he'll go Man, here's what happened though. They turned officer on a bad. They turned him bad. I'm not gonna say the dude's name, but he caught a dude on the phone, right, one night. Caught a dude on the phone, and the dude, the dude, you know, he told a few people. Some, it, it was some witnesses too that saw him get caught, you know, on the phone. So then Officer Honor came back and caught him on the phone again the same night. He came back the same night, caught him on the phone again, right? So Officer Honor let him go. He let him go. He let him go. Well, 
the next day, you know, a couple inmates talking to another officer who had came to work the next day, talking to the officer and like, yeah, man, uh, you know, I want to call your boy back there on the phone, call, call, call dude on the phone back there, you know, da 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 So this particular dude, this particular officer, you know, he, he going to lock you up, right? He going to put you in the hole about them phones and, and anything, right? So, so he put the boo game on the dude who had got caught with the phone. He called him up over the loudspeaker. Inmate, such, 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 such. Report to my office. Report to my office right now. Do, do, do. So he get up there. He put the boo game on him. Hey, I want to caught you with that phone. Go get that phone and bring it to me. Go get that phone and bring it to me right now. Or whatever he told him to get him to bring. The, he bought the phone to him. He bought the phone to him. Right? Now, apparently, though, the officer told him, well, look, you bring me the phone. I'm not going to lock you up. You bring me that phone, though. I'm not going to lock you up. So he bring in the phone. He didn't lock him up. But here's what happened. The dude, the, the officer used that phone in that situation to get on a fire, to get Officer on a fire. Yeah, he, he, he launched a whole investigation and you know, had, you know, whatever, uh, 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 what, what, what you call it, depositions going on and stuff about this phone that he had caught the inmate with and let him go. This officer got that phone and used that situation. Man, got that man fired, man. Got the man fired. He was a good one, you know what I'm saying? But during the time the investigation was going on, he was still, uh, Officer Arnold was still working at the prison. Well, he wasn't letting people go no more. He started locking people up in the hole. You know what I'm saying? Before, he wasn't trying to catch nobody with no phone. You know, he let you go or whatever. After that investigation took off on him, then he started locking people up by them phones and stuff. He started locking people up. And then eventually, like a few months down the line, yeah, he got fired, man. He got fired, man. So listen, young people, man, stay at home, man. Go to school. Get your degree, man. All right? Stop playing around in school because because life is serious so take school serious you understand stay out of these people jails stay out of these chain games man love y'all man rev me your tv share this video with at least three people share this video with at least three people rev me your tv love y'all signing off